baseball career. What's his world like? Oh, it's extremely exciting. You know that if you perform, you will get the call. Let's see if he's tough enough mentally here to adapt. That's what good players do. That dream of getting the big leagues is now becoming reality with that one phone call. Baseball is one of those sports that us UK and largely Europeans have no real affinity with. But in America and Japan, baseball is a huge sport. And when it comes to video game renditions, MLB The Show is the modern day equivalent of the Atari VCS real sports baseball. Now being an exclusive Sony PlayStation title since the very first station of play, it now scores a second run on Xbox Syncs going multi-platform and even Nintendo Switch gets a look in this year. Thanks to provided review code, I was granting an innings on PS4, the Pro, the PS5, Xbox consoles and series consoles, checking out visual performance, loading and content across almost every format you can buy to see if this is yet another home run. Now most, if not all of the updates, landed in last year's release, but PlayStation 5 and Series X do offer some welcome increases over all other releases. The Stadium Creator is the biggest gameplay perk, allowing you to create your very own hand-tailored arena of Diamond Battle. This feature adds a great deal to hardcore fans, I'm sure, and is a welcome return from last year. And again, exclusive to the top-tier consoles and the Series S. Now another boost and loss for PlayStation 5 and Series X are those 4K resolution and 60fps gameplay modes, something which is missing on base last gen consoles as well, and Series S, but not on the Pro or Xbox One X. Let's hit the comparisons then. For this two piece video we're looking at the PS5, the Series X, the Series S and the Pro is representing the last generation and there'll be a separate video up around the same time which covers last gen in its entirety. So resolutions are the first port and both PS5 and Series X hit a native and sharp 3840 by 2160 which is very clean due to a basic FXA type pass to soften any shimmering elements ish. Now with the high resolution and relatively low frequency textures those reliance on normal maps limited mid map increases leaves assets and material quality below such a high IQ requirement. For the game's aims though this is enough, presenting a stable and shimmer free display on both premium consoles by and large. The Series S yet again drops significantly behind these two though and even the last gen Pro version and One X, which supports an exclusive multi-mode over all three current gen and base last gen platforms, they all miss it. As such the Series S has only 25% of the PS5 and Series X resolution at 1920x1080 which leaves you with a softer and noisier image than the bigger consoles albeit with a minor reduction in IQ due to the low detailed assets and areas I've just discussed. Nevertheless it is undoubtedly a vast reduction in next gen presentations that does not hinder the other two consoles and compared to the last gen consoles at least in the premium ones this is not a superior version. That 1080p image causes a great deal more shimmer on high frequency objects such as flagpoles, wire fences and even specular edges. Again some of that is the lack of any TAA and even a decent AA solution at all. Often not a problem with some long shots being very unstable with sub pixel detail wavering into and out of existence per frame, specifically in the depth of field pass. The quality lines up close with the faster option the Pro supports, but this is the lowest setting that it has. The other two modes, balanced and then sharper, bump resolutions up to 1440p and then a native 4K respectively, providing an almost identical visual package as the now gen consoles in the PlayStation 5 and Series X, albeit with some other reductions and a much lower performance metric. From a visual perspective, the game has a high production value, character models are quite detailed, they use a decent level of physically based energy aware consumption materials and even show off a pro based GI bounce from stadium grass or sand during the days at least. Now these are improved further with great motion capture and blending is mostly good with some obvious keyframe mix in between noted replays from time to time. Those same cube maps help increase material accuracy more with bats, glasses or helmets. Fletching the stadium itself, but the lack of any SSR or ray tracing here does stand out though as other characters or objects are not present in these reflections. And this is one area the Pro actually reduces in those cube maps when above that faster mode at 1080p where they are present. At 1440p balanced or 4K sharper they are removed or at least the material cutoff level for that reflection is much higher therefore you don't get many reflective surfaces. 
Again, there are some other cutbacks in terms of lower point sample bokeh depth of field and a lower kernel blur. Also, this runs on the 1080p mode as well. And even though this is lower than all three current generation consoles, aside the Switch obviously, the sharp shadow maps and heavy reliance on normal maps to fake cloth and wrinkles on clothing is still pretty good. But like other aspects of the visual package, it's starting to show its age. None more so than in the stadiums, which look very flat, devoid of the material quality required to support the same level we see on the actual team members. Grass is low fidelity and low filtering at times. Stadium apparel is very basic and low detail. Textures are blurry, MIPS are not swapped to a higher chain on distant hills when zooming in, and even in the stadiums themselves, giving a last-gen remaster vibe. The Road 2 mode also greatly highlights these lo-fi assets, combined with no to little ambient occlusion in these sections which can look even worse, and even though they are limited to the story mode, it does not keep up a consistent and high level across the player modes, which the game does have in abundance. Crowds are pretty low quality, but at least are used in high numbers across all formats, and when bathed in that depth of field, they certainly serve their purpose. Now, the visual quality overall does lack ambient occlusion, and even though it's slightly better on the Series X and the PS5 over the last gen models, you can see some increases to texture quality and certainly resolution on certain assets, as you can see on screen. Generally, it's all pretty minor, and even though ambient occlusion is improved, it still looks very flat and very old school. And this really does stand out now when you're playing titles at 4K, just really highlights how much they need to improve the base under line assets it's not all about resolution as i always say first pitch coming at you right after the break now although animation is by and large excellent some areas can also improve here clipping can be bad but very common in sports titles facial animation and eyes can be very stiff and wooded compounded by the robotic nature of their expressions and even non mo capped actions when they're blended in between Overall though, the biggest gripe is the reuse of so many animations across all areas, something mirrored in the commentary which can repeat very quickly and often. The crowd banter is good though, with random single dissenting voices heard yelling overrated or team appropriate go back to New York when aimed at the Yankees. The higher resolution and largely smoother Series X and PS5 versions do impress at times due to good use of light sources, shadow quality, and are pretty much identical carbon copies between each other from shadow maps, asset details, textures, depth of field passes, everything is identical. The only minor difference is some pop in all different levels of LOD or bounce lighting in the stadiums at the background, which you can see here, which happens on every version. So this isn't a difference between the versions. They are absolute carbon copies. And pretty much aside resolution and frame rate, that's true for the Xbox One and PS4 versions even. There are minor improvements, but nothing drastic. Post effects are decent with a bokeh shape depth of field used and then a depth aware Gaussian one used for that focal length of the camera itself. And aside the cost and impact this can cause to performance across all formats to varying degrees, specifically on those last gen premium ones where you change the mode, it's still a nice addition and one that really helps sell the character models on replays. It's largely sacrificed in the gameplay cameras, which aids performance. And really, the biggest sacrifice is the night and rain sections. They really stand out as looking the worst sections of the game itself. Because they lose that bounce light, they lose that additional light source, that shadow casting light source from the sun, you're left with just the stadium lights, which gives a very flat overall lighting, which is quite accurate. But due to the lack of abundant ambient occlusion across the title, everything looks like it's floating and stickers on the background, which really stands out. And therefore, it really highlights the material quality and textures aren't there to back up the quality. Lighting is everything, as I always say, but the night sections really don't stand up to scrutiny at all. And then on top of that, the rain effect is very weak and nothing impacts characters or the ground. So you just see these raindrops falling very weakly in the background, but no characters getting wet. There's no water droplets. There's no specular highlights being built on helmets or skin. Nothing seems to be affected by this. And therefore, it is a very last generation visual title. And in fact, it doesn't look significantly better than even, I think, MLB 19, which is the last one that I looked at. Presentation levels and interaction in terms of the dynamic cameras and how everything's stuck together, it does work very well. But overall, it doesn't feel like a step forward. It's not a step back, but certainly with a new generation of consoles in their second year, I did expect more from the visual package than this. Hopefully, the next release can improve some of these areas and more that I've discussed.
Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. And there's one away. So moving on to performance then, the PS5 and Series X first. Like I say, in 84K, only one single mode, and they look very sharp and clean. And in general gameplay, there's no performance issues, and that's good. It's a 60 FPS lock line across both when you're batting, bowling, running. Everything feels pretty consistent and smooth. But obviously a game is based around its presentation levels for TV and this means a lot of these interactive or well, at least dynamic replays that you see throughout this video and elsewhere in the title, they do stress the GPU quite heavily. And this means with the dense character models specifically around that bokeh shape depth of field, all very high quality, doesn't look to use any very low buffers here. I'll, I'll be surprised if they're not slightly lower than native 4K but they certainly look very crisp and sharp. This puts a very heavy stress on the GPU and that means that even the PS5 and the Series X dip heavily in most of these sections. But sometimes that tune can be 22 to 25% faster on the PlayStation 5. Now generally both versions dip heavily so they don't perform at a lock solid 60 at all and they are replays so it's not that offensive but it would have been nice to have an option to maybe lower these quality or tweak them a little bit. And overall the, the Xbox version isn't bad which is what a lot of people may say and I cover that more in the last gen release. It's still a very good port but it's an engine and an API designed around PlayStation that means it's certainly an advantage there and also PlayStation has much faster clocks and a lot of titles with pixel fill rate and texture fill rate this title is using heavily on those bokeh shapes and the post effects generally that really is going to prefer that higher pixel fill rate that the PS5 can deliver and that's largely what I think we're seeing here between the Series X and the PlayStation 5. Generally outside these sections it performs pretty well and I'm certainly not going to offend anyone but the replays can be very variable. Now, the Series S does a pretty decent job at 1080p. Again, it has all the same effects that I've just mentioned. Nothing seems to be sacrificing that visual package. Very slight improvements over last generation, but nothing significant as I've just covered on the Pro. But performance can actually be worse than the Pro at 1080p. Again, there are subtle changes. You can just see here that depth of field filter that I mentioned before. It's reduced on the Pro specifically. So you can see somewhere between 5 and 8% better performance on the Pro in these identical 1080p levels. So there is a certain tweaking to the GPU settings here on the Pro to get that benefit back. But generally, most people wouldn't notice those in play and it can be slightly smoother. Again, the Series S performs slightly worse than the Series X, and on top of that, it's only 1080p. It doesn't even have a mode to push to 1440p and sacrifice performance as we see on the Pro and Xbox One X, which is a shame because that would have been a great test here to align up both those consoles and see just how well it performs. But what we're basically getting is a title that is, well, four times higher on Series X and actually performs better on Series X, which gives you an idea of what a base port without heavy optimization there and native buffers along most of the output on the title. I do stress this a lot. Resolution is only one metric. The output buffers can vary quite significantly between different elements of the screen, post effects for one, alpha effect, all those kind of areas and not just the, the depth buffer or the resolution itself. So the Series S doesn't perform great and it really it does perform well in, in gameplay, absolutely fine. It's slightly better than the Pro, in fact. That does have a few more stutters in gameplay. But overall, in gameplay, they're all pretty close. But visually, the Series S loses out to the current generation consoles and even loses out to the last generation premium ones. And that, just for me, makes the Series S a bit redundant again, which I'm saying quite a lot in a lot of my analysis at the moment. And I really don't want to say that. So it's a shame. It's a good title. It plays well, but it certainly isn't one that's to to show off the power of the Series S. So finally, loading. Again, just reinforcing, this is a pretty low-fi port from the last generation releases. We've covered that visually. We've covered that in terms of the construction. And the loading is a very similar situation. It can be affected by online elements. I'm not going to take that into account, but just loading straight into a, an exhibition map, which we can see very close loading times between all three consoles. And even with a Pro powered with an SSD, there's hardly anything between them. All the numbers are on screens. So overall, it's a pretty decent port, but it's not one that really adds a great deal the PS5 and the Series X are the only ones that feel like they're pushing above last generation, but not by a considerable amount. One exception to that is, like I say, the sound is brilliant. I think it's a really good title for sound and the way they mix audio and the way things sound, in certainly in 3D audio headphones. 
But the PS5 is the best version to play because the Dual Sense really comes alive, and it's one of those titles where you go back and play the other versions, you really notice the sacrifices made. As you hit the ball, it vibrates your pad. Uh, when you're throwing it and you catch a mitt and you, it thuds into your hand, or even just hurling the ball and you lose the analog choice and flip it. There's a lot of elements in terms of the dual sense here, which I actually was quite impressed with, and it really brings that to the forefront when you go back to the other versions, including the Series X, which doesn't have any of those features. So it is one title, like other ones that I've covered before, that really do make good use of the dual sense itself. There could be more done with the force feedback triggers, I think, in terms of batting, but overall, it's still a very good title that utilizes the dual sense very well. Slider, when a guy's able to really tunnel the pitch where it looks like a fastball and then late, has a really good bite, so tough to lay off of because you've made the decision you don't want to get beat by a fastball and then you swing. And you so what's my summary then? Well, as a baseball game, I'm not a veteran of these, having played many over the past 40 years or so, but I have a minimal level of knowledge of the sport. I can testify that it feels very much like the FIFA or PES of the baseball world yet deeper. It's filled with stats, modes, customization, card collections, excellent motion capture overall. Good character models and animation topped off with a high production value and presentation level. Certainly the road to and the video sections work really well if you're into this kind of area. The fact the only thing it really is missing is chewing gum to come with the cards. As a simulation, it's one of the biggest games on the planet and it really hits home here. Sometimes a little bit too accurately in terms of the dull nature that baseball can be when you just can't get a good bat or you just can't get people out. So I do appreciate the fact that there are lots of modes here where you can reduce that down. You can go into this fast play. I think it's March to October mode where you can just play short sections or even that diamond mode where you can actually have these short sections in the game to turn it around. And overall content wise, it has a great deal here. And as a baseball game i'm sure many people could spend months and months on it i get that just like fifa pez moto gp many other titles if you have the passion for the sport it delivers in spades if you have xbox game pass then obviously you can try it out and just see what you think of the title it doesn't feel a leap over last year's release it certainly is a great baseball title but if you bought that i doubt there's much more here to really pull you back in i doubt there's a baseball game that has more again though i'm not a huge baseball aficionado but overall, presentation-wise, it's high. But the quality, the visuals, and overall, the materials and everything else around that next-generation version that it should be, it just doesn't deliver. In fact, it feels little more than a port from last generation. And that one hammered. That's back there. Pulls it in on the warning track. And that's it, an end of another detailed in-depth analysis. I hope you liked this and checked out my other part for Last Generation just to keep things on track. If you do remember, I'm completely independent and self-funded with all the people that support me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. I do have a, a video up soon, in fact, two videos up this week for patrons, which will be later released to everyone else on YouTube. So if you want to get early access to them, get questions into my database section, or just speak to me, then please either hit the link down below and hit me up on Patreon, Follow me on Twitter if you can, or chat me on Twitter. Certainly leave comments and a thumbs up, because that really, really helps to get interaction on the video. I'm sorry to preach that, but it is. And if you don't subscribe, why not subscribe? Hopefully my content is good enough. Anyway, I shall catch you guys and girls on the next one. Go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this.